Hello and welcome to Anthony's TV. My name is Ted Duxbury. Oz is behind the camera. <clears throat> and I've got my favourite dude from Roland with me. Hey, Andy. Yeah, nice thank you. Yeah. Hey, you have been brilliant coming in and telling me the things I don't know about Roland products, mm -hmm. which is so useful, and telling the people out there. Uh, be sure to check out the other video. We just did one on the SH... 4D. 4D. Yeah. Killer. But this is the S1. I've deliberately stayed ignorant. Tell me about it, please, Andy. So yeah, this is the S1, which is the newest in our uh, IRA Compact series of products. And genuinely, I say I've worked for Roland for 10 years and this is one of my favorite products that we've ever brought out for it. It's just awesome. I love it. So it's really great. It is a compact synthesizer. So uh, last year we brought out uh, these other three devices that you can see here, which were the first three in the IRA Compact line. So we had the T8 Beat Machine, which gives you drums and it also has like a 303 bass line in it. Then we had the J6 chord synth, uh -huh. which is sort of based on a Juno 60 with some slimmed down synth controls. Uh, but it's really clever in that it, um, it has uh, different chord genres that you can sequence together. It's really nice for creating sequences and inspiring stuff. And then we also had the E4 voice tweaker, which is a really great vocal processor for doing um, you know, auto pitch uh, functions and also harmonies and uh, vocoding. And it's got a looper and things in it as well. But the one thing that perhaps was kind of missing from the range, you could say, is uh, having a dedicated synthesizer with lots of hands-on tweakability. And um, this is what this is what the S1 is, and it and it uh, it keeps all of the same cool features. So it's got its own really cool color. I think it's a nice green one. Mm -hmm. But the the great thing about the uh, the Ira Compact series is, as well as being small and portable, but they're uh, all battery powered by uh, lithium-ion batteries, so you charge them up. Um, so we're, even though I've got it connected to this, uh, to my phone on an oscilloscope, we're just running it on a battery at the moment. Uh, you get about four and a half hours out of them on a full charge, which is good. Mm. It's got lots of great uh, sync options for connecting to other devices, so as well as uh, like a dedicated sync out for clock sources. We've also got uh, MIDI in and out on the back as well. And um, yeah, they also really punch way above their weight in terms of sound quality. So I should give a sound again. Seen a lot of hubbub. Mm. about this. Yeah, yeah. You're on a bit of a roll at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are. I'm going to say Roland are coming back in 2023. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're so excited. Yeah, let's get into the nitty gritty of why it's so exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just give a quick sound example maybe. Okay, hit me. Like, so. Already effects sound amazing as well. What he said. <laughs> exactly. It's 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 awesome. Sounds great. So this is so fundamentally. This is based on uh, the SH101, which is a, a fa oh. famous Roland mono synth from the 1980s, and um, it uses our analog circuit behavior. Uh, technology to model the sound. Uh, there are people who've done videos uh, online who've already compared it to a really SH101 if you want to see how uh, how close it sounds and it is super close and um, but there's a few extra kind of like tricks up its sleeve really so first of all it is four notes uh, polyphony so you can play chords with it which is really great and as well as being you know, following the sort of same kind of principle as the SH-101, it has a few tricks up its sleeve that allow us to do some really interesting sound design options and things with it as well. So uh, we can have a look at that. So if you ever wanted an SH-101, it, it, it does that, it's got that covered. Yeah, if you, are, if you just want it to get it and have that kind of sound, absolutely. And should we run through it Nick Bat style, like the core? Are we gonna do that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So uh, I'm just gonna run through to a pattern I've programmed on here. So. We start off, uh, let's just start off with a, a saw wave. So in our oscillator section, mm -hmm. so you have sort of one oscillator with different waveforms on it. So when we're using it a bit like the SH-101, we have um, a, a saw, a pulse wave, where you can change the pulse width modulation on it, a sub oscillator and a noise oscillator. Then we go through a filter mm -hmm. and an envelope. 
underneath, and we also have an LFO on it running it as well. So uh, just running sort of a basic oscillator sound and building of a sound. And uh, as you mentioned as well, really awesome effects. So delay and an awesome reverb as well. In fact, actually there's seven different types of reverb, but it just sounds great when you turn it up, so. Very tasteful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really yeah, nice. There's something yeah. about that. People are getting their heads around it now. Like all the DSP guys in yeah, the yeah. companies are like, all oh, right, they're sounding good. Just and the SH one hundred and one to me, my lame synth is. It always had that um, unadorned. It was interesting. Mm. That the, the fat direct sound that's yeah, got yeah. that. Um, and then when do we go off into new territory? Yeah. So uh, so yeah. So you can use it obviously in that traditional kind of. Already four synthesis. voices compared to one game changer, yeah. chords. Yeah, underneath it you have uh, a little keyboard so you can play notes, you can play chords as well. Um, but yeah, when we want to sort of go in a couple of different kind of directions, so it's got a few, uh, few little cool tricks up its sleeve. So we have uh, two cool functions, we've got a draw oscillator and a chop oscillator as well. So I'm just going to reload this uh, pattern so we can see this. Um, and you can see over here I've got a, an oscilloscope running on my phone. So actually one thing as a quick cool point is you can, um, you can record directly out uh, from USB uh, audio and MIDI into either a computer or a mobile device as well, which is really cool. So we're just Killer. running it. Um, so if you wanted to just record from this straight into um, your phone or your iPad or computer, Really cool, do that. Yeah. Uh, so when I play a note on here, you can see it on the screen. First oscilloscope on the Anderton's keyboard channel. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> this is, I feel like we're a real synth channel now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 100,000 cool. subscribers and an oscilloscope and Andy, let's go! Yeah, yeah. So when I play, my, when I play a uh, square wave, you can see it on the screen on here. Maybe I'll just zoom in slightly. So one of the cool extra functions it has is a draw oscillator, which allows you to draw your own waveform from scratch. And it replaces the uh, square wave when we engage this. So if you're building your sound, you can still use the saw wave, you can still use the sub and the noise oscillator, but instead of a square wave, you can draw your own waveform. So if I, if I want to turn on, I go shift and uh, draw, which mm -hmm. is button five. And let's just turn this on. So we have two different options. We can have it as a, a slope. You can see on our oscilloscope here, that gives us a triangle wave. Yep. If I put it on stepped, mm. you can see it gives us stippy, stippy. steps. Yeah. And um, what we can do then is we can, oops, once we have uh, decided, say on step, I can go over to our uh, form here, which is, this is sort of giving us um, uh, the waveform split across 16 steps and I can grab a step and then tweak that. So to show it, I'm just going to hold a note and I'm going to press hold on here uh -huh. so, and then I'll, I'll uh, adjust it and you'll see on the, uh, on the screen here what's happening. So let's just zoom in. Wild. So you can use that to sort of make your own custom waveform, which is really cool. Mm. And um, again, if, if I wanted to, I can make it, uh, so make the transition smoother if we wanted to. So let's go back to the slope mode. Mm -hmm. So if I put that on here. Oh, so smooth. I see. So you can really sort of, uh, as I say. I see, but I also hear. I know <laughs> we're looking at the <laughs> oscilloscope being yeah, like, yes. oh cool. But like the difference in Tombra is mm. wild. Totally. We're, we're out of SH1. A one land and yeah. into a whole new world there. Exactly. And then so if I, uh, if I exit out of this and I, I run the sequence, you'll, uh, you'll uh, see that it sounds obviously quite a lot different now. So it does sound uh, completely different now. And also another thing that we can do to that sound is we can run a thing called a multiply function. So if I hold, an, uh, if I go over to the next screen where we said multiply, 
Uh, and as I hold a note on here, if you watch on the screen, we run through the multiply function, it sort of increases the frequency of the waveform, uh, kind of like a sync function in a way. I hear, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Makes sense. Exactly, and there is a shortcut for that, which is uh, shift and the uh, uh, square wave function. So actually while the pattern is running, you can change that in real time as well. So you never heard an SH101 Wait, sound I'm going like to go that, full so. Nick Bat. <laughs> can I modulate that? Uh, you can. Um, yeah! So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I never cool. ask those type of questions, but when I see that now, I'm realizing, God, that power. Yeah, yeah. No wonder people are excited by it. Yeah, exactly. There are some parameters that you can't record in the sequencer, but that, that's one of them. Cool. So after draw, I'm seeing chop. Yeah, so chop. So I'm just going to uh, reload my uh, sound on here. Bound for the reload. So we've gone back to our um, square wave now. And uh, yeah, the chop oscillator. So this is something that you can apply to all of the, the waveforms. So we can apply, uh, if I go into shift and six, which is to go to the uh, chop function. Mm -hmm. So when I've got my square wave on here, what it allows me to do is actually just take chunks out of the waveform. So while I'm holding, if I set a note going and we remove things on here, you'll see on the screen what's happening. Which is cool. And then I can also, if I bring in my saw wave, I can go into that, do the same kind of thing. On the sub as well. Interesting timbre. And our noise. So what this means now is that when we uh, bring out and all of our waveforms in and run our sequence, again, we've got a widely different sound. Mm -hmm. yeah. We also, as well as with the, uh, with the drawing oscillator, you had the multiply function, you've got comb filtering on this as well. So we, by holding shift and tweaking the sub oscillator, we can comb filter it as well. which is cool. So you can get some real kind of like metallic kind of sounds out of it as well. So it's really, really versatile. And you don't have to, with the chop oscillator function, I mean, I've done it on all of the waveforms there, but you only have to do it on one if you wanted to. And you can even com combine them both. So if you want to do the drawing oscillator on your uh, uh, square wave, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, apply a little bit of chop to, um, uh, to the saw or the sub or anything like that, you can, uh, you can do that too, which is cool. And sequencing wise, so mm. sound wise, we can nail vintage tones mm -hmm. and more yep. with the polyphony, yep. then go off into everyone's going to have their own unique sound because yeah, yeah, you'll yeah. have drawn mm -hmm. that. I think that's so cool. Yeah, Especially exactly. if I was a youngster being like, oh no, this is my waveform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. like, I've made this. Dope effects, demotion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Come uh, on, let's see a bit of demotion. Uh, on the effects as well, I should mention there is uh, there are four types of chorus in there as well in the mm -hmm. menu if you want to go on those. If you want to have a go, uh, so hold Please. down. So when we play it, hold down D motion, pick it up, move it around. Check this out. Oh, no. oh sensitive. Ultimate keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you've got a family member or a boyfriend or a girlfriend that likes <laughs> buy them the S1. <laughs> Stick on T Links below. <laughs> Links below. <laughs> Available. D motion. Awesome. I love it because it, that's just that crazy bit of Roland that's yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. Like it feels um, old school Roland. Yeah. Uh, sequencing wise, I can't believe they fit on a couple octave keyboards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, does, how do you feel that integrates in with sequencing? Do you... Yeah, so the, well, there's a few different ways that you can sequence. So if I, in terms of patterns, we've got uh, four banks of 16 patterns that you can go through. So if I just go to, say, a blank one um, on here, 
and you can do up to uh, 64 steps. So you can do um, you know short sequences or something that's a little bit longer, mm -hmm. which is nice. Um, if uh, and there's a few different ways that you can record in. So because mm -hmm. we can play the keyboard, if you wanted to, you can you can just real time record. So if I hit uh, play and start. And you can record in that way. Um, or there's also uh, options for step recording as well. So um, let's just, in fact, I'll just do a short sequence on here. So if I want to change the length, I go shift and button four. And let's just go for, let's go for five steps. Why not? Ooh, why not? <laughs> One for the modular heads. <laughs> and uh, when I go to uh, step record on here, so I choose my first step, so I choose an A, and then I go to my next note. And I can run that. But there's some cool things that we can do with this. So I can, uh, when I go to look at my steps on here, I can, if I hold down a particular step, pressing the D motion, I can change the note if I want to edit it, or I can change the velocity, change the gate length. I can also do probability, which is quite cool. And uh, let's say uh, sub steps. So if I put a 30 second note on that one, let's say on this one, Let's go and put in, say, a triplet, or you can do odd kind of um, triggering. So now we've got, Whoa. which is cool. And uh, yeah, as I say, probability. So if I go in and let's put this one down to, I don't know. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, I probably went too far there. Maybe like forty or something like that. And with this, can can we ever fit through some of the effects? Yeah, because I feel like I glossed over those. Yeah, 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 they're awesome. awesome. Let's hear them over that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so this is bringing in the reverb. As I say, there are seven different types of reverb that you can access. Let's have a flick through through that. Yeah. Is that right? Let's crank this rezo up. See what happens. Spring modulated. And we've got plate. They're really well EQ'd. Mm. Yeah, yeah. They just work it's, in the mix. It feels like someone's actually doing a bit of EQ now, so yeah, they're yeah. just giving you like. They Full all, bandwidth. They all sound so good. Yeah, yeah. But you have parameters for that though. So, I mean, you can change as well as changing sort of the time, changing the level. You can change the amount of pre delay. You can change your low cut and high cut on it, the density. Right. So, you can adjust, you know, they're not just fixed as is. You can, you can change. And I was them. so surprised when I said about the sequencing, I'm like, oh, yeah, we'll be a normal TR8 style, but yeah, that's yeah. really in depth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, so you can live record in, uh, as I say, if you, um, I mean, we haven't got it set up here now, but if you plug in a MIDI controller, you can you can just play in. Um, or you can, if you're using the arpeggiator, which we haven't talked about as well, actually, but you can record that into the sequence as well. Um, one last thing on the effect, sorry, while we're on it, uh, as, as I mentioned, there is a chorus, which is in the menu, so you just find, uh, where are we? There we go, chorus. So as we run it, Four different types that we can use, um, but also while we're in the sequencer, the other thing is that we can record um, motion in it. So while uh, so parameter automation, sorry. So you can have up to eight parameters per step. So say if on say if on our sequence on this first step, we can just crank the reverb up to maximum on that one. Have it on zero on the next one. Can we do filter sweepy stuff? Oh yeah, sorry, yeah. So in um, in real time. I'm saying it. We're we we do not have to be 
we're not in bed. We're in bed with all the brands yeah, here yeah, at yeah, Anton, yeah. so we can say openly. But I was just saying he's got that Volca, mm. and uh, I never got my head around the motion secret. Like it was always a bit hidden. I'm already seeing that I could understand that. Yeah. Mm. Are you feeling that, Oz? You could. Yeah. I yeah. can get my head around that. Yeah, totally. Now, excite, excitingly, we've got all four of them on the table together. Yeah. Uh, how do they interact? And uh, I see that we've got in, out, mix. You said that this is class compliant. That's cool. But yeah. together, how would we sync them together? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so a couple of options. I mean, just mentioning, if you do have other devices, these will sync quite nicely, just plug in um, you know, mini jack cables into them and they'll send clock to each other, which is cool. If you have multiple ones of these together, so on the back of them, I mean, you can either sync them from here, but we also have uh, MIDI in and out um, over TRS cables. So you connect them in and they will all talk to each other and share clock information as well. So when you start, say the drum machine, it'll start all of them, which is quite cool. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to, I mean, if, um, you know, we talked about the J6, which has got lots of like kind of preset chord pa patterns, or you can program your own chords. If you want to use that to drive the S1, you can do, and even you know have them two together, so two different sounds playing the same part. You can do that. And um, we also talked about using the vocoder on this and using the J6 to sort of drive the uh, the note information for that. You can do as well. And another cool thing is, so we have audio uh, in and out on all on all of them. But the input is uh, is passed directly to the output and is unaffected by the master volume. So what that means is if I daisy chain the audio together on all of them, uh, it's kind of like I have a mixer. I can turn down the volume of one in the middle and it'll only turn down the volume of that device. You know, you don't have to worry about gain staging them through, throughout the thing. So that's, that's really cool as well. Yeah, this, uh, that's very handy. Yeah. I've got those little pop op operators mm. and not the same on that. Yeah. Like, that's killer. Is there a world in where we can plug this in? Yeah, yeah. And uh, then play people out with it? Yeah, have a bit of a jam. Oh, let's freaking do it! Yeah, yeah. Boom, we're back in the room. Rejig the table. Yep. Uh, you're going to play us out because I heard a little snippet. It sounds really dope. And I said, Andy, can you explain to me what's going on? And to you out there mm -hmm. and then you'll perform it. Yeah, How yeah. are these hooked up and what's going on on each bit? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, on the T8, I'm just programmed in a, uh, a drum part. So quick recap for people. So this is kind of like uh, a, a, all of the classic Roland drum machines in one. So sort of we have um, a kick from a 909, a snare from a 606, I think. We've got a, a you know, clap from an 808, you know, and hats from a 606. Oh. So kind of different flavors together to make it a bit sort of like uh, its own thing. The best of. Yeah, exactly, which is nice. And, uh, and then you also have a 303 bass line in there that you can bring in. We have on uh, the uh, J6 on here, so this is based on the Juno 60 in terms of the sound. And Juno 60 is my, my favorite synth of all time, it's just tasty. Um, and you have controls for filter and envelope on here, loads of preset sounds, but what's really nice is you have lots of um, uh, chord sequences that you can program in. So I've, I've programmed in a sequence on here where, oops, let me just turn this up, so we've got Some sort of tasty synth wavy kind of chords, and uh, and then we have also the E4 voice tweaker where we've got some harmonies going. One two, turn up the voice on here. One two, which is cool. And that that's the harmonies are going to be in tune because it's listening to the MIDI. Yes, yeah, yeah. Cool. So we've synced it all up via MIDI. So the the MIDI is going out from the T8, sending clock information into the J6, which is then passing that on into the E4, but it's also, because I've set those on the same MIDI channel, it's also sending the uh, note information from that to the E4, so anything that I sing will be in tune because of the notes that it's getting in there, which is nice. And then, uh, and then also we're sending clock information to the S1 as well, and I've just programmed a nice sort of uh, brassy lead sound to go over the wow. top of it. Which is cool. and surprisingly neat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. And whenever I, I'm always scared to put these things together because I'm like, oh, there's going to be a bird's nest. But that's yeah, yeah. so cool. And it sounds really good. Thanks for being here. Yeah, no worries. I really appreciate yeah, it, man. No Thank, you. Thank you. And this is an absolute smash hit at the moment, sales wise. Yeah. So uh, links below and just get your name on the list. It's going to be one of those, isn't it? It I is think. a little bit. 
don't just think of it as for for the price. You know, don't think of it as being aimed at beginners. Because I think if you're if you're into synths, whether you're a beginner or if you're really advanced, you can get so much fun and and you know uh, really meaningful creative results out of this in whatever you're doing. So it's really cool. You should check it out. Also, thank you, mate. Play us out, baby. Cool.